It's the 12th of July, and right across Northern Ireland today, tens of thousands of people are celebrating the 323rd anniversary of the Battle of the Boyne. Now, traditionally, we begin our coverage here in Belfast, but this year, the Orange Order has designated one flagship 12th in Londonderry, and that's because this year, Londonderry is the UK city of culture. That's where we begin our coverage, and we join Mark McFadden. Yes, Paul, a special day for this city, and the Orange Order says it's determined to play a full role and really make its mark on City of Culture celebrations. The only flagship demonstration of 2013 was led by a new City of Culture banner, and officers of the City of London Derry Grand Orange Lodge were wearing City of Culture collarettes, specially commissioned. For the occasion. The banner was painted at the beginning of June in the Playhouse by an artist called William McGowan and we believe it's the first banner to be ever painted within the city walls. We have the oldest building on it which would be the St Columns Cathedral and we have the newest which would be the, the new Peace Bridge and that's linking the two parts of the city up with the old barracks on, on the other side of the water. As it's a special year for the city, the three most senior orange men in the British Isles were on parade together. This is the first time the three of you have uh, paraded together, I understand, in Northern Ireland, but not the first time you've been together. No, we've walked together on a number of occasions. We were in London last year for the Jubilee celebrations. We walked in uh, Melbourne in Australia last year, and we would have walked in Toronto <laughs> many years ago. Must be nice for you to have all three grandmasters here, especially in City of Culture year. Absolutely delighted to have my two colleagues here from the mainland and to celebrate the UK City of Culture here in Londonderry. I've been in the city uh, many times. Uh, the impressions are it's, it's changed quite a lot that for, from the first time I was here. It was exactly 40 years tomorrow, the first time I was in Londonderry. 40 but years? 40 years ago. And uh, I was only a young boy, of course, but it's changed a lot <laughs> since then. <clears throat> and I think it's changed for the better. Around 60 lodges representing the five districts of the City of London Derry Grand Lodge, plus lodges from Coleraine, Limavady, McCoskin and Cloddy. Also there, of course, the lodges from County Donegal. Also stepping out were the junior lodges and members of the Ladies' Association. It's a long, hot walk in high heels. Around 40 bands were taking part, but in a city famous for its walls and its siege, one band was doing its best to conjure up that 17th century spirit. So that's it from a hot, hot Derry, London Derry, or legendary as it's been dubbed for 2013, on a day when the city of culture has taken on a distinctly orange glow. Paul. Mark, thank you. Well, here in Belfast, they're about to pause to remember at the Cenotaph, remembering those who died in two world wars and in more recent conflicts. And this year, they'll be remembering in particular David Black, the prison officer murdered on his way to work, Channing Day, who died on duty in Afghanistan, and drummer Lee Rigby, who's being buried today in England. A member of the Shankill Road Defenders has composed a drum salute to Lee Rigby between the tunes the drummers play. about showing off or fancy drumming. It's about showing a mark of respect through music that Lee Rigby and his family and his regiment would appreciate and understand. So this is our opportunity to say, we're sorry for your loss. We believe that what you did, fighting for your country, defending freedom, all those sort of things, we, it struck a chord with us and the loss of him. It, it really, really struck the band, you know, an, an awful tragedy, that was all. Each 12th, the parade is led by a different district. This year, it's the turn of number six, representing the lodges of East Belfast. 
And uh, you're not overdressed, are you, given the weather? Uh, possibly so. Linda did suggest that I should buy a short sleeve shirt, but pretty much the money spent. <laughs> Parade numbers are swelled by visitors from Scotland. Celebrating its 200th anniversary, King William Lodge from Paisley. How different is it walking in Belfast from walking in Scotland? There's, there's not a great deal of difference, but uh, I think uh, here the, the crowds are more supportive. Uh, and uh, they obviously take great pride in uh, this organisation. This year's 12th has an extra significance as the County Grand Orange Lodge of Belfast celebrates its 150th anniversary. So oh. This is the first year you're walking as the County Grand Master. That is correct. And it's a great day, year to be the 150th anniversary of the County Grand Lodge of Belfast. Six generations of orange men. Thousands of spectators line the six-mile route which takes the orange men, women and bands through the city centre, along the Lisburn Road and out to Barnet's to Maine on the outskirts. For the record, on parade today are 130 lodges and 66 bands, 21 of which have travelled over from Scotland. At the demonstration field, the Orange Order pledged three resolutions to uphold the Protestant faith, to congratulate the Queen on the Diamond Jubilee of her coronation, and they affirmed their commitment to marriage as being between a man and a woman. So that's the picture for now in Belfast. Time to go west, where not all of today's Orange men have been walking to their demonstrations. Peter Cardwell reports from Fermanagh. A traditional route, but not by traditional means. Tom Elliott of the Ulster Unionist Party enjoying the trip to the start of the march with his Orange Brethren. This is one of the bigger rural 12th celebrations, and today Balna Mallard played host to 90 lodges from around Fermanagh, as well as 70 bands. King Billy led the parade, of course, with his trusty steed. Also marching were lodges from Leitrim, Donegal, Cavan and Monaghan, who were pride of place at the front of the parade. There was also a memorial banneret to 31 Orange members from Fermanagh, killed in the Troubles. Nearby, the County Grand Master looked back over the day. Very good day. We have had, we have had people, we have people here, students here from America. We have people from Sligo here and uh, we have a contingent of people from Scotland, Orange men and their families. And how do you feel the day has gone itself? Very, very good. Glorious 12th, as we call it. <laughs> and glorious weather for the glorious twelve. Glorious self. weather for the glorious twelve. One of those visitors was from Eastern Scotland. It's my first visit here. I normally go to Belfast. This is my first visit in Fermanagh. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And there were many more local faces, young and old, at the field too. We're from County Monaghan. We come from uh, Lasarle, um, and we come to Fermanagh every year. Uh, so it's a very enjoyable day and. The kids love it. It's been very warm, so it's been good fun trying to keep them cool. We're up in Ballinamallard here today. Uh, we have a Demard Lodge orange man behind us. Uh, great day and sunshine. Everyone's very happy. The mercury has hit 26 degrees here in Ballinamallard this afternoon. It's an absolute scorcher, and people are really enjoying the festivities in the sunshine. But the afternoon's wearing on. It'll soon be time to pick up those chip wrappers, dust off the collarettes, and head home. Before then, let's go to Judith Hill. She's in Newton Hamilton. Orange banners held high against a perfect summer sky in Newton Hamilton. From across County Armagh they came for what outside of Belfast is the largest gathering of orange men on the 12th. It's been 11 years since the 12th was last year in Newton Hamilton. Today around 5,000 orange men accompanied by 80 bands made their way through the County Armagh town. Earlier the day began in a reflective way as local lodges gathered to lay wreaths in honour of Trouble's victims. And for some of those taking part, the 12th itself brings with it decades of memories. When I was about seven or eight years of age, I suppose my first memories of it. And I like the 12th of July, all right. I love it, but uh, as I get older, it gets a bit harder, but you still want to keep up the tradition if you're fit to do it at all. Traditional music is right at the heart of this county demonstration with lambeg drumming and pipe music popular features. 36 years playing the bass drum, Kelly Van and Silver Van. Um, and I play the bass drum because I'm thick skinned and I make a lot of noise. 
I think there are lessons that can be uh, obtained from, from County Armagh 12th here in Newton Hamilton. This is a predominantly nationalist uh, uh, village and yet this has been organised without any problem, uh, no difficulties and, uh, and I think there's a good spirit uh, about it. Around 15,000 people came to be a part of the experience with some finding interesting vantage points. And what is it about the County Armagh demonstration that you think is unique? Well, we're a very friendly bunch here in Armagh. You won't get the like anywhere. And you're getting a decent suntan as well. You reckon so? We just love everything. The heat and also the band. I saw my granddad go past. Did, did you wave at him? Yeah. Did you cheer him on? Yeah. It's beautiful and like everyone's super nice and I love all the different like instruments and everything. Once in the field it was a chance for a rest, some food and time to soak up the sun or hide from it before the day's speeches and then paraders began to wind their way home. And that is it from the 12th here in Newton Hamilton. We cross now to Paul Riley in Risharkin. More than 40 lodges representing five districts took part in this year's North Antrim demonstration in Risharkin. Orange men from the village welcomed brethren from Bush Mills, Valley Castle, Ballamoney and Clock Mills and were joined by 26 bands along the three mile route. The sound of accordions, flutes, pipes and of course the lambeg drums were heard as the 2,000 participants made their way through the village via Main Street and Church Road. Among them, Balamoney LOL 954, which is celebrating its centenary year and walked alongside a specially designed lamb bag dedicated to a famous local sporting family. With Robert and Joey, the history, the, the two late great riders, and then with William and Michael now being local heroes, and Michael with the greatest ever, you know, one of the great TT performances of this year. So we thought it was appropriate to put Joey onto one of the lamb bag drums. Um, I think it's definitely the fastest, the fastest lamb bag in Ireland. And of course the good weather proved a huge draw for many. I enjoy the music, I enjoy seeing people I know. So the rest of my family is all in the period and I'd like to come out to watch them. The weather's doing a lot this year and uh, the bands are lovely. I love music. That's we Ella. This is Ella's first world. Yes, it is. Uh. Oh, so far. oh yes, he's waving the flag well. It's well, it's just everybody getting together and seeing a community out and watching and a great day. And what's, what's the highlight for you in general? Uh, it's again just the, the whole family orientation of it, you know, seeing families out together, watching um, granddad's sons, everybody out together. Thousands packed into the field at Church Lane, where Grand Chaplain of the Grand Orange Lodge of Ireland, Reverend Mervyn Gibson, was guest speaker. Usually get asked a few months in advance, six or seven months, and since then uh, I've been looking forward to coming and joining our country brand, especially today. It means I don't have a 14 mile walk in Belfast. Oh, I think I can expect some great music or some great pipe bands I've already seen. I uh, can expect some beautiful banners. I think there's a couple of new banners on display here this year. And I think they'll have one of the glorious twelfths there's been in years. Well, it will be another five years before the twelfth is held here in Rishark. And again, the crowds here today have relished in the glorious weather. But now it's time to check on how today's demonstration in Castle Caulfield went. And we join my colleague, Gareth Wilkinson. Making a big noise in a small village, Castle Caulfield was filled with the sound of bagpipes as County Tyrone's biggest 12th parade got underway. It was led by a supergroup formed by five local pipe bands who got together for the occasion. All the pipe majors of all local bands got together last year and, and really thought it would be really good to do something like this. So uh, it, it, I think it's unique across the province, uh, bands working together and really just showing off what is a part of our culture and tradition here in Castle Caulfield. The sights and sounds of over 70 lodges and 50 bands on the march. A poignant day for Cookstown's Montober Lodge. It's their first 12th since lodge member, prison officer David Black was murdered by dissident Republicans. In total, Castle Caulfield hosted lodges from six districts. A special day for the Grand Master. This is my 50th 12th. I stepped out for the first time in 1963 in Pomeroy. as a little way in front of uh, the local pipe bond here. And uh, this is 50 years later, this district master. I uh, don't know how it happened, but it has happened anyway. And it's a really, really special day for me. Over 40,000 people packed the village. 
this heat is nothing new to you. Nothing to us, no. Even if it was snowing, we'd still be here. <laughs> Hail, rain, blow, or snow, we come. The weather, the weather makes it. It's great. It's great. And what do you love so much about the twelve? Well, just the band and the people. Have you ever missed one? No, I don't think so. I remember the tower lifting years ago. You think it'll be lifting this year? No, it's better down. <laughs> the colours bloomed as the sun shone, but soaring temperatures made the 1.2 mile route seem much longer. There was a religious service in the field, but cooling down was the priority. Is this Hanky a new part of the uniform? Uh, well, I'm just thinking of bring it back to the style, you know. I might get some sort of uh, cultural space. <laughs> There's an Ulster Scott hat. <laughs> Maybe I'll go with that there. <laughs> <laughs> well, this 12th really has been a record break or record breaking crowds brought out by the record breaking temperatures. It'll be seven years before the 12th returns to Castle Caulfield. So they really have made the most of it. So, from a scorching hot field in Castle Caulfield, it's over to Alison Fleming, who's been watching the parade in Ballymena. Simmering heat, the parade made its way through the town. 30 lodges from the district, accompanied by 15 bands, with huge crowds enjoying the day. Well, tens of thousands of people have come out today to line the route here and watch this year's parade. And it's nothing new to the people of Ballymena because this is the only town in Northern Ireland to hold a 12th demonstration every single year. Well, Ballymena is quite unique in that fact that uh, we're the only, well, apart from the Braid District, we're the only district that walks on its own every year. So every year we come to Ballymena and hold the parade there. Is it any different this year, anything out uh, of the ordinary? The obvious, of course, is the weather. Like, I think it's the first time and uh, probably mem mem memory that I can remember that, that we've been out without umbrellas. Indeed, parasols were more the order of the day, and it's an event that for many is an annual highlight. It's a beautiful day and it's nice to see it. It's sunny for the orange men walking up down to the parade, so it's great. I've been out every year since I was a child and it's, it's been great. From an early age, I just came to watch the bands, nothing, nothing really political in any sense, just to have a real family day out. And have fun for all the kids. You've been coming out to see the 12th for 70 years. Yes. Why do you enjoy it so much? Because it's our culture and we just love it. We all get together and have a good day. The main thing is the good weather. But uh, apart from that, it's nice to see people enjoying themselves. There are around 1,000 orange men in the district. This year's parade was hosted by the Donegaran Temperance Lodge. And for the Kelswater Lodge, a chance to show off their new banner for the very first time. Orange men, bandsmen and spectators are all getting some refreshment and having a well-earned break here at Bali Park before making the return journey through the town. And from Ballymena we cross to Look Brickland where we join Shauna McKeown. About 100 lodges and 80 bands took part in today's celebration in Loch Wickland, billed as one of the larger demonstrations in Northern Ireland. In the sweltering heat, thousands packed out the streets to cheer on 3,000 orange men and women in this village of special historical significance. It was here that King William assembled his army before moving to the Battle of the Boyne over three centuries ago. In 1690, uh, just about this time of the year, 36,000 soldiers uh, were inspected by King William before they moved off towards the battle. So we're really standing on a bit of history then today? Absolutely, this is one of our most historic sites to hold the 12th.
Pipe, flute and accordion bands representing eight districts made this a musical extravaganza. Then it was to Grove Hill Road, a chance for many to cool off by the lake and enjoy some refreshments amongst family and friends. It's lovely to see everybody enjoying themselves and the weather couldn't be better. Well, it's great here to be in the field with a good fellowship with our, our brethren and our supporters and all the family and people around us. And the weather's been kind to us as well for once. For the good weather, good crowd, good atmosphere. A special visitor from Togo was invited to today's parade. African Orange Man Foley Bruce is a former Grand Secretary of the Loyal Orange Lodge of his native country. Uh, it's an honour and a privilege to, to celebrate with a fellow in North Ireland, the 12th. And closer to home, a group from Dublin were invited to the celebrations as part of an All-Ireland cross-community initiative. Uh, I've never been to an Orange March before, I've never, I've never been here to see one and uh, it was fascinating to see. Uh, it's very colourful and the, the bands are fantastic. It's been eight years since the County Down Village last hosted the 12th, but organisers say today's crowd has far exceeded that of 2005. So it's been a glorious day here in Loch Rickland with a massive turnout for today's celebration. Time now to cross back to Belfast and Paul Clark. Well, while this is the biggest day in the orange calendar in Northern Ireland, the 12th of July, they've already had their celebrations across the border. That was last weekend in Donegal. And from Ross Nyla, Natasha Miller reports. It's said that time goes slower in Donegal, but they hold their 12th here before anyone else. The Republic's largest 12th demonstration is held in a holiday atmosphere. We're expecting a very big day of the day because the weather is on our side as well and there's people, bands we've never been here before and we've increased a lot of the new members in our own county here in the last 12 months. Ross Nyla has always proved to be an irresistible draw for orange men from right across Ireland, but now it has been marketed on a global level. It has been included as part of the Irish government's gathering initiative, which attempts to attract people of Irish ancestry back to the homeland. This year there was a record crowd of onlookers. Everybody just loves it, I think, because it uh, goes back to your childhood. It's unbelievable. You need to come and see it and hear it, and you want to keep coming back. Everybody's so friendly, and, you know, it was a really great day. Sun, surf and sashes, a perfect package holiday for orange men by the Donegal coast. And that just about brings us to the end of this year's 12th. For those people who are here at the field, of course, the journey is only half over because they've got to get back home again. Until the next time, goodbye.